Hello and welcome to eBible Fellowship's Evening Bible Studies with your speaker, Chris McCann. If you'd like more information or to hear more studies, visit our website at www.ebiblefellowship.com. And now, with your evening Bible study, here's Chris McCann. Good evening and welcome to eBible Fellowship's Bible study in the book of Revelation. Tonight is study number 30 of Revelation chapter 11. And we're going to be reading verses 15 through 17. And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders, which sat before God on their seats, fell upon their faces and worshipped God, saying, We give thee thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which art and wast and art to come, because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and hast reigned. And I'll stop reading there. We were looking at verse 15 in our last study. The seventh angel sounded, and the seventh angel is the last one to sound. It is the third woe of the three woes for this world. It And all three woes are describing the day of judgment, the pouring out of the wrath of God at the end of the world upon all of the unsaved inhabitants of the earth. And we presently are living on the earth at the time that this is happening to the people of the world. And it is a spiritual judgment right now that they cannot see. And and therefore, the world goes about its business as though it's business as usual, nothing different than any other time. And yet the truth is, it is very different time. That This is a vastly different time than times past when when God was actively saving. The wrath of God is upon the inhabitants of the earth. The cup of God's wrath is being poured out and given to each unsaved person. And they don't have to be aware of it. That's not necessary. Uh, Just as God judged the churches and congregations for a full 23 years, an exact 8,400 days. And for the most part, almost all within the churches and congregations were ignorant of that judgment upon them. They denied it, dismissed it, ignored it. And if you said today, is God judging you? Of course God isn't judging us. God loves us. God is uh, in our congregation. He's blessing us. We have um, new members. We're building uh, a new church wing. And, And so they would give the evidence of God's blessing they think. And so that teaches us, since God began judgment at the house of God, he began to give the cup of his wrath to those called by his name, to the corporate body, uh, that number about two billion in the world, and God judged them furiously. He destroyed them spiritually. He loosed Satan as uh, a weapon of destruction as an instrument in his hand to wreak havoc in the congregations of the world. And even though God did all these things and his hand was heavy against them, they did not realize it and still don't realize it. And so, of course, the world, which lacks even more understanding of God in the Bible than those in the church, if if that's um, possible, if if we can say that, at least they have no dealings with God as those in the churches do. The church at least has the Bible in its presence and reads it and and knows some of the things written therein. Well, the people of the world don't even have that. So how are they supposed to recognize this spiritual judgment that's upon them? How are they going to have better spiritual perception than those um, professed Christians that are in the world. Remember what God said 
in 1 Peter. In 1 Peter 4, in verse 17, For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And that's what we were just talking about. And then it continues. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? If God is going to judge the churches, and he did, and and they were ignorant of it, they knew not the judgment of God, exactly as their forefathers spiritually the nation of Israel had God's wrath upon them, and, and they didn't know. Remember, God says that in Jeremiah chapter 8. He says in verse 7, Yea, the stork in the heaven knoweth her appointed times, and the turtle and the crane and the swallow observe the time of their coming, but my people know not the judgment of Jehovah. So Israel did not know. They, they were told, they had, um, Jer- or Judah, Jeremiah the prophet, uh, admonishing them, telling them exactly that God was displeased with them, that God uh, was going to raise up a nation out of the north, the Babylonians, to come against them. And yet they still didn't know. This is the nature of man. He does not understand spiritual things. He does not understand the judgment of God. That's what the Lord says in Proverbs 28 in verse 5. Evil men understand not judgment, but they that seek Jehovah understand all things. Evil men understand not judgment. So, uh, if we're looking for the world for any sort of confirmation, if we're looking for them to realize all oh, the judgment of God is upon us in order to uh, encourage us that, yes, these things are true, that we're living in the day of judgment, we're looking in entirely the wrong place. The, the church uh, knew not the judgment of God, Evil men understand not judgment. That's why when uh, God says in Ecclesiastes, in um, another book that he moved Solomon to write, just like Proverbs, in Ecclesiastes 8, verse 5, Whoso keepeth the commandment shall feel no evil thing, and a wise man's heart discerneth both time and and judgment, not a fool's heart, and a fool is uh, anyone who's unsaved, a wise man's heart. And the Bible's definition of a wise man is one that possesses wisdom, of course, and yet wisdom, not the wisdom of knowledge, the wisdom of reason, but the wisdom that is Christ. Christ is the embodiment of wisdom. He is the essence of wisdom. If someone possesses Christ, they are wise in the sight of God, whether it be a little baby or, or a little child, or whether it be a full-grown person. It doesn't matter how smart they are, how intellectual, they are wise. And a wise man's heart discerneth time and judgment. Not evil men, not the foolish They don't discern these things. That's what God uh, also told us in Daniel, in chapter 12, when he said in verse 4, But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. And then he repeated it in verse 9, And he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed Till the time of the end. Then verse 10. Many shall be purified and made white and tried. But the wicked shall do wickedly. And none of the wicked shall understand. But the wise shall understand. None of the wicked shall understand. And how many is that? Well, that's zero. 
That is a zero percentage. None of the wicked. Now, uh, what's interesting is that God opened the scriptures, knowledge increased, which included information about the end of the church age, which included information about the day of judgment. The, the very day was revealed by the Bible to be May 21, 2011. And many people latched on to that information. But remember, God says, A wise man's heart discerneth both time and judgment. And, and so, in the days leading up to May 21, it appeared that there were many that understood both time and judgment, but actually they understood intellectually, many of them, time. They, they heard the time for whatever reason, um, not sure with some what their reason was, but whatever the reason was, that it was interesting, it was exciting, as Mr. Camping used to say, some people think or thought he had a crystal ball, and uh, everyone likes to hear uh, the future foretold. And so, whatever the reason was, some joined up and, and clung to the idea. Maybe they just wanted the safety of being on that side, just in case it did happen. They, they just wanted to make sure that uh, they were right with God because they were listening. Uh, they, they believed it, you see. Well, then God, who said here in Daniel 12, 10, none of the wicked shall understand. Well, the Lord then brought to pass judgment day in a spiritual way. And when something occurs spiritually, it can only be seen by the eyes of faith. It can only be seen by the one who is given spiritual eyes to see. And so God did not bring about any sort, any kind of physical destruction. No great earthquake, no shaking of the ground at all, no terrible occurrences taking place in the world. It was like any other day physically, and yet spiritually there was a drastic change, and, and God did do as he said, and he shut the door of heaven. He began to pour out his wrath to punish mankind, and mankind, remember, um, none of the wicked understand. Evil men understand not judgment. My people, God says of uh, Judah of old and, and the church of our day, know not the judgment of the Lord. These are because God works in the spiritual realm and they cannot perceive spiritual things. Uh, they, they have natural minds and therefore they quickly, uh, some of them and some for whatever reason, held on a little longer and a little longer but God has so designed Judgment Day. He has made it such uh, an abominable thing to the natural-minded man to hold on to this date. It becomes to be a despised thing in their mind, that date. These, these people won't let go of that date. And they begin to think evil of the people of God that refuse to let it go. They're tired of hearing about it. It, it didn't happen. Why don't you just admit it? And they, they begin to think, oh, those people holding on to this date, they're proud. They're arrogant. They refuse to humble themselves like me, like me. I humbled myself. I recognize nothing happened. And now... It, it's opened my eyes, and, and so I, I now begin to doubt a lot of things that I, I had accepted. I wonder about that biblical calendar. I doubt that calendar. I doubt the church age is even over, and, and, and how crazy some of those doctrines were that Christ was slain from the foundation of the world, and even annihilation 
uh, all these things. Uh, how could I have ever followed any of it? And they begin once once they they just cannot hold on. They can't hold on to that one truth. As God says, a wise man's heart discerneth both time. Okay, they saw that. But judgment also. The judgment of spiritual judgment. That, that's an excuse to them. It's foolishness to them. They can't see it at all. And that causes them to step back. And then once they take that initial step back and start going in that direction, other doctrines begin to unravel and their true color comes to light. They were always this way. They never believed these things. They never truly knew them. And Christ never knew them either. As they did not know the word, he did not know them. And so it is the fire of judgment day, the spiritual fire, is manifesting the work. As 1 Corinthians 3 tells us, it says there in 1 Corinthians 3, verse 11, For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide, which he has built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. So God has lit that spiritual fire. He now places all these professed believers, and some are true believers, into the fire, and the day of judgment begins to work on everyone. It begins to um, just just relentlessly, it relentlessly, day after day, day after day, try each individual, and the day declares it, the fire tries every man's work of what sort it is. Now, if someone is gold, they're going to be purified. They're going to come through the fire even better, even in better condition than when it began. But if someone is wood, if someone is hay, if someone is stubble, the fire no wonder that with someone with stubble the, uh, on May 22nd, they got burned up and they were gone. Someone uh, would, it takes a little longer to burn. And, and so maybe it's a year later, maybe it's two years later, but they will not endure the flame. It is guaranteed by God. This period, which very likely will be 1600 days is a period of severe testing. 1,600 days breaks down to 40 times 40. There was a great deliverance of God's elect on May 21, and instead of going right into the promised land, just as the Jews that came out of Egypt did not go right into the land of Canaan, God brought us through by way of the wilderness. He's taking us through a period of testing, just as he took Israel 40 years out of Egypt through the wilderness for a particular purpose, that those that murmured might be destroyed, because it was God's plan that not one of them, not a single individual that complained and murmured against him, would enter into the promised land. He intentionally brought them 40 years through that desert in order that that whole generation die out, except for a few men that were true men, true believers. And that's how it is now. God has intentionally prolonged the day of judgment and extended it in order that the fire of this time period burn off the dross 
in order that individuals begin to fall away, to drop aside, to to leave the things that they had professed to believe. And, and so when we see that happen, actually, we should not be discouraged. It actually is accomplishing God's purpose whenever that takes place. When someone just suddenly, and, and I've seen it happen so many times now, um, with people, I thought this is a sound individual. I, I would have thought that prior to May 21, and even for some time after May 21. This is a sound individual, just just someone who knows the true gospel, and, and you have that feeling of uh, a brotherhood or a sisterhood. You have that feeling, this is a brethren. This is someone who's a child of God, and and they are experiencing like things as you. And then the next thing you know, they'll they'll start uh, going in a direction and they start asking certain things. And, and then when the answers are given from the Bible and it does answer them, they're not satisfied with the answer. And slowly and sometimes a little quicker and, and they're gone. And the next thing you know, they're with others that, that are pointing the finger and pronouncing heretic and, and reviling just incredibly like those in the churches were reviling God's people when the information about the end of the church age came out. And you think, how can they have sided? Don't they know where they're, they're at right now? Don't they know that uh, they have left the truth? They have left the faithful word of God that uh, and and they don't see it that way. They don't see it that way at all. Well, um, you know, it, of course, it's all by God's grace. It's all according to His will, and not one man or woman will endure as a result of our own steadfastness, our own power or strength. But God brings us through, and, and he does all the work in us. He, he's the one who saves us. He's the one who opens our ears to hear these things, to hear the voice of Christ. He's the one that keeps us on the path, that will not let us turn aside to the left or to the right, that will not let us go backward. We have to keep going until the day dawn, and and God will cause each one of his elect to endure to the end. Isn't that an amazing thing that God says in Matthew 24? And uh, I haven't read this for a while. I've referred to it, but I haven't read it. In Matthew 24, he says in verse 13, But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. What an incredibly um, prophetic statement that is. And, and now we look at our situation. We look at the fact that we are living in the day of judgment, that God's elect are alive and remaining upon the earth, that there are all of these forces that are working, trying the child of God. The spiritual fire has been lit and he has gone uh, through that fire, and it, of course, it's never a pleasant thing when a fire is uh, lit and you're in the fire. Uh, but, but just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the fire has no power to hurt us because one like the Son of Man is with His people, and He will protect us, and He will cause each elect individual to endure. However long Judgment Day will be, to endure unto the end, and the same shall be saved. And, and the fact that they did endure to the end doesn't save them, but it's because God saved them that they endure to the end. Thanks for joining us for eBible Fellowship's Evening Bible Studies. You can hear these studies Monday through Friday over PalTalk, Skype, eBible Fellowship's webcast audio, or over your phone. 
For more information or to hear other studies, visit www.ebiblefellowship.com. Until our next study, may the Lord's perfect will be done.